Hi, this is Jordan Dunn and this is Vogue Visionaries. I'm a mother and a model and I've been modeling for 15 years. It's not that serious. Come on set with energy, ready to pose your little ass off. So the class is five chapters and you can use the time bar below to skip to any chapter you like. Oh, I knew I was going to cry. I first got scouted outside a Choice FM Junior Jam concert for under 18s. It was very unexpected. I didn't really think about modelling and I was really excited. And I went to their offices and took pictures and then for them to turn back and said that they didn't think I was right for their agency. Fast forward, like a couple of months later, I got scouted in Primark in Hammersmith. And the next day I went down to the offices and they signed me straight away. My top two tips for getting scouted. Number one, I would highly suggest using your social media platform as your portfolio. Number two, you can go onto agencies' websites and submit your photos. So over the years, my essentials for a shoot, definitely make sure that I have my phone charger. Also, you never know, so I would always make sure that I have my shade or foundation. I think it now is better, but before I couldn't just rock up on set and just be like, hi, let me just sit in this chair and you guys do what you want. No, because A, they may not have my foundation. B, they actually may not have the right products for my hair. So when you are a model of color, you do have to be fully prepared for anything and anything. Skills to perfect for a photo shoot. I think number one is making sure you have a good night's sleep. You want to be fresh and present. Time is money. We got to get the job done. The first time being on set was really nerve wracking because I didn't realize how many people are on set. And it kind of made me feel very self-conscious about how to move in front of the camera. So once I got out of my head and not overthinking how I look and just let go and have fun. It made the process of being on set really easy for me. Three essential things that I will bring to a show. Number one, nude underwear. No patterns, just seamless. Make sure that down there is all good as well. And your armpits. Making sure that you have your own makeup remover because sometimes makeup, the makeup team just leaves and don't leave anything behind. And then you're like, oh God, I've got another show to go to or I have another fitting or I have another casting and da da da, I've got a full face of makeup. So always make sure that you have your own makeup remover. So now I am going to show you the JD walk. So boom, I have arrived. Let them soak it up. Then you just focus thinking, Lord, don't let me trip in these shoes. Don't let a nipple show. Give them another look. Okay, so my three go-to poses on set. First thing I wanna say is just give more. Don't care about how you look. The more awkward and broken that you look, the better. So just be like a broken doll. Bend the knee, keeping it broken and not perfect, giving different angles, finding your light, hand movements. Don't be scared to go down, just feel voguing out. It's like a dance, just give different poses each time. Jordan's signature pose number one. I don't know why, but I go with the hand here, my face down. Okay, let's give a seated one. Do anything but sit. Like, yes, that's cool, boring, but try and see if you can bring a leg up. Woo! Ah, oh. I don't know. Oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> you know what? What you should know is that fashion. It's fun, darling. Have fun with it. It's not that serious. 
Come on set with energy, ready to pose your little ass off, have fun with it. Don't take yourself too seriously. So preparing for a shoot, I get set in the mood board and most of the time they do have references. So I think it's good to go in knowing what kind of vibe the shoot is, what kind of poses they want, if it's gonna be a movement, if it's just gonna be portraits. It's important to know your fashion references. This could be looking at magazines, going on YouTube. There's so much resource, there's so much inspiration that you can draw from. What I wanna make clear is that once you are with an agency, they will help you build your portfolio. You don't need to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on a photographer and for a shoot. You can actually just get creative with your friends. If you know people who are photographers, you can build your portfolio, like I mentioned in the beginning with your social media. But the key is, if you haven't got an agency yet, is to make it more natural, not overly posed, not too many filters, not too much pouting. Agencies, I'm not looking for that. They want to see personality because that is key now, but also they want to see you in more of your natural form. I think it's important to have your own moral compass. Money is great, but if it doesn't match up with your morals, you're not going to be feeling good about it. So I have to see if the brand aligns with my beliefs and what they stand for and what I stand for. So I think having that as a basis will really help you with the direction you wanna go and it makes it easier to say no. Saying no is very powerful, but the one thing that I've learned is saying no out of fear is not helpful at all. And in my career, I have turned down things, not because I didn't feel like it was matching up to my beliefs or anything just because I was scared to I was just scared I had fear was holding me back so I think it's important if you do have a really great agent listen to their advice of why they think you should do it and also just don't let fear hold you back a beauty tip that I have learned is invest in your skin. Our skin is our biggest organ and we really put our skin through it, especially with the amount of makeup we're putting on. The cliche of drinking water and taking off your makeup before you go to bed, which for me is like a number one. Like, doesn't matter how tired you are, take that makeup off. So my personal style over the years has been the basis of street sheep. I like to take influence from people around me, my peers in fashion, people that I see on the street. And even going back to different eras, like I love 90s fashion. I love jeans and the tee and all the slip dress. Also just having fun with it, finding your styles and just elevating it. Ah, oh, mate, body confidence. <laughs> it's been a journey. But no, I mean, growing up, I lacked confidence with the way I looked. Everybody celebrated it in the industry, but growing up in West London, it wasn't being that tall, lanky girl. So I've just learned to just accept all of me. My body is amazing. Like I actually gave birth. I can't change that I'm tall. Accept you for you. And if there's something you want to change, change, you know? So it's a journey, but I'm happy to say that I am fully embracing the skin that I am in. So my first season in New York um, was in 07 and I remember one of the shows that I was really looking forward to was Marc Jacob. Also very nervous about because everybody was making it a big thing like the casting for Marc Jacobs and blah, blah, blah. So when I finally booked that show, it was super exciting. I remember wearing this like, yeah, this hat and the rim was really, really big and you couldn't really see my eyes, but you could see my lips. I remember my mom seeing it and I was like, yeah, like I could tell, I knew that was you because of your lips, like the way you like pout your lips. Another moment that I remember, which is super clear to me was Prada. First time I walked for Prada in 08. Now this was like huge, but I didn't even realize how much of a moment was because it's like the first black model walking down Prada runway in like 10 years. So 
once I got, once I went onto the runway and I felt the energy of everybody, it was just weird. It was just a weird feeling. And then afterwards, it was like the next day, it was all over in the papers and it was just like, oh, wow. And that's when like things really started to shift. And like, it was just mad, the fact that I am part of that moment. And another big moment was when I walked for Jean-Paul Gaultier Couture for, was it oh, oh, wait, oh, 09, oh, 09, when I was seven months pregnant. Um, again, when I got the call that they wanted me to be part of the show, I was excited, but very, very anxious, just thinking about the backlash that I'll be getting. But when I can tell you, it, I felt so comfortable and I felt embraced and welcome. And I just felt like, wow, this is also another moment. Just to have that moment, I tell my son about it. It's like something really close to my heart and that I cherish. I think it's important for when you are in these moments that you stay in this moment and you be present for it and you find some enjoyment, enjoy it. Also, I think it's important to kind of, for me, what I learned is just to kind of block out the noise and the madness that's going on, finding my center and not getting distracted by what's going around me. And just, even if it's that, like, find your center could be like, speak for me, was speaking to my mom. I would always be backstage speaking to my mom. So my last British Vogue cover story, we shot in Richmond and I was super excited because it was just like a 10 minute drive from my house and it was a beautiful day outside. What was the direction? Yeah, it was just kind of to be like dreamy and flurry and really because the dress has so many layers, I kind of in my head just wanted to be like, I was just thinking I was just this magical beam. I'm just like this ray of energy and it's just flowing and love and flinging and all of that stuff. I think it's very important to have the mind frame of every shot counts because really and truly you don't know which shots are going to be selected and you don't want to be disappointed and to be fair you may will be disappointed with the selection but if you know that you gave it your all and you just treat every shot like it's the shot treat every shot like it's the cover shot there you go because you want to be the muse you're the inspiration so I would say just treat this like it's a cover all the time. So my top three tips for a good work-life balance are number one is find, create your support system. I'm very blessed that my mom was very hands-on and she allowed me to travel the world and she was gonna be at home looking after Riley. But for me, it was hard because I just felt like I was missing out on so much. And I just felt like my mom was now Riley's mom. And I was just the relative visiting and hearing about all of his first. And that really hurt me for a while actually. But then I kind of took it for, you know what? This is great that my mom and my son is forming this an amazing relationship. And I think it was just kind of getting over the guilt and just reminding myself I'm doing this for him, for us. Number two, give yourself a break and take a break. Very important. Number three, I would say you have to do something that you love. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense that you're gonna be leaving. For me anyway, if I don't do something that I love, it's like I am not leaving my house to leave my son to be in a place, be around people that I do not like or want to be around. Like I need to love what I do. Motherhood has taught me to have patience. And it's good because once I got back into work, I was just not phased with what was going on on set. I was just patient. If something didn't fit or there was delay or there was, I don't know. I don't know, anything can happen on set. I was just calm and collective and know that this is, this is nothing, this is all good. My tips for young working mums, you know what? Don't be afraid to ask for help. We all need help and just find your tribe. If it's other mums, if it's, I don't know, but find your tribe. Do not be scared to ask for help and support because we all need it.
I mean, Riley's going into secondary school this year and I am really trying not to freak out. I'm learning not to put my triggers of school onto him, not to put my trauma onto him. And remember that my experience is my experience. Riley's journey is gonna be Riley's journey. During lockdown, what I've learned personally is that a routine and discipline is key for me. And so I started reading this book, The 5am Club by Robin Sharma, which I would highly, highly recommend. And it's all about a morning routine and how this morning routine can elevate your morning, elevate your day and just sets you off in the right tone. So I've been waking up at 5am, meditating, journaling, reading, morning yoga, just this sacred time for just me where nobody else can interrupt. There's no mom, there's no Jay, no one wants nothing from me. It's a time dedicated to moi. And I have found it so helpful that it just sets me up for a good start. As a model, you have to adapt to new surroundings and new people all the time. And that skill has helped me during these uncertain times because we had to adapt to the new normal. Top tip for surviving lockdown is learn a new skill. For me, it was acting. Acting is something that I've always wanted to do, but always put off it because I didn't have enough time. And lockdown has given me nothing but time, which I'm very grateful for. So every day I am working on my mental state. And it's just about, for me, knowing that I am going to have good and bad days, but it's about how do I navigate to come back to the center, to come back to the middle of one and peace. Knowing that it's okay, I'm going to drift this way, but you can either keep on going that way or you just navigate your way back. So for me, what I find is very helpful is taking moments to just breathe, taking a moment to just stop and pause. You see, social media can be a blessing and a curse because it does play on both sides of things. It's important to make sure you control what you see and what you digest. So I I make sure that I follow accounts and people that are only going to make me smile and bring joy or and what I'm gonna I'm gonna gain something. I'm gonna gain a new intention, I'm gonna gain a new insight, I'm gonna gain knowledge, I'm not gonna I'm it's not feeding onto a negative part or feeding into doubt or judgment or comparison. So I think it's important that you control what you see and who you follow. So my relationship with social media now, I don't overthink it. I don't read my comments. I've made sure I've filtered certain words that are triggered for me. But the one thing about it I would say is annoying is that when you're not on it and actually enjoying life, people think like you must be depressed because you're not showing your breakfast or your kid or your boyfriend or your husband. It means something's wrong. It's like, no, I'm actually in the moment enjoying what's in front of me. Coming into the industry, I really didn't think I would find people that I could relate to, that I could go to for support. But I was wrong. Like when you are in your teens and you're in a new environment, you're then surrounded with other girls or other people like you who are in the same situation. And they may have different backgrounds from you, but you guys both share something that nobody else that you grew up with or you know is experiencing. So I found like a sisterhood with my friends like Carly and Cara and Cecily and Chanel. And we were able to, we were in this together. Being older now, I definitely see 
how important it is to find a mentor in just in this industry and just in life, having a mentor, someone to gu help guide you. And even for myself, I have had people reach out to me who I've looked up to and know that I have access to them, but I've stopped myself from reaching out because of insecurities of really feeling like, oh, I'm getting all emotional. Um, of not feeling worthy. Oh, I knew I was gonna cry. I had people, have had have people that I know that have shown that they are here for me, that they want to support me, that they want to help me. And I, what's always has stopped me, what I now realise, because I'm now doing the work and I'm realising things and learning thing, new things about myself, is that the reason why I didn't pick up the phone to call that person or reach out or text that person is because feeling of feeling not worthy. So then even when people come, like I meet people and I vibe with them and generally have a good connection and then they like, you know, give me their details and they're like, say like, call me or text me. And then it's like, this is exciting, it's new. Oh my God. But then it's like something stopping me because it is that, just that self worth, worth and not feeling like I, my vibration is not even with theirs. Like how can I even? So the one thing is, is that I'm taking from it is that I know that I have that support. I know though that I am my worst enemy because I am just, my self saboteur just, just always just comes into play and I'm learning to just hit her in the face and take her down and not allow her to resurface and yeah, it's, it's a journey though, it's a journey but I'm grateful that knowing that I have those people, knowing that I have people like Edward, I know that I can reach out to <laughs> Carly, Cara, like I remember the first time Tyra Banks gave me her number and I was freaking out. I was like, what do I say to Tyra Banks? Like, so I've had people in my life that has shown me that they're there for me, that want to be there for me. What it is about for me is just being open. I don't think at the time when I was starting out, I was open or ready to receive that type of love and support. Look, I even got fair is not an option written on me. And sometimes I forget it, but like all I've been basically been saying is just fair, like fair of being great, fair of making connections, fair of shining bright. Like I just, you just can't let fair get in the way. So um, fair's not an option, get out your head pick up the phone and call that person or text that person or follow that person or send a DM to that person. Like, what's the worst thing they can say? No. I honestly am proud of the fact that I didn't give up because there were times when I tell you I was on the phone crying to my mom after every season saying, mom, I don't want to do this anymore. Please cry to the agency. I don't want to be a bother anymore, but I'm so happy that I was able to get out of that and still continue. I'm still here, baby. I would tell young JD, giving up is the easy option. That's why not everybody is the greatest. Not everyone is an Naomi or a Kobe. Three most important lessons that I have learned. Number one, being on time, get it together, be on time. Number two is to say hello, to say thank you, to say please, to leave that attitude at the door, come to work, be a positive energy. And last one I would say is look after yourself. Look after your health, look after your mind, your heart, your soul, it's so important. I'm Jordan Dan. this is Vogue Visionaries. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have gained some insight, some inspiration, a laugh, a cry, I don't know, but thank you so much. <laughs>